Let's try this again, shall we? TRX 40, 32 core, 3970X Threadripper CPU. We're not gonna custom cool this time, so I expect we won't have leaks, but we are going to liquid cool still, thanks to the Enermax LickTech OC TR4 2240 something AIO. Yeah, it's specifically designed for Threadripper CPUs, and Enermax said it would be the solution to our problem. So. We're gonna rebuild the system. We're not gonna show you the entire build. We're gonna kind of skim through it. And then we're gonna test the heck out of this 240 mil AIO and see if it actually can withstand these pretty toasty uh, TRX40 temperatures. Stay with me. If you're upset about that inconsiderate Windows activation watermark plaguing your screen, snag an OEM license. SCD key makes it simple. You have one in a few seconds for a little over $10, then click here, 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 and then here, paste your activation key, and you can kiss that watermark goodbye. And be sure to use my new offer code GSL for a 12% discount on your order. So we've got our 64 gigs DDR4 here. This is 3200 megahertz and we have eight DIMMs, so that occupies all eight slots. No dead space, not really a requirement to fill in all eight slots, but it looks pretty darn good. So I've left the uh, 3970X in the socket since the leak. I did test to make sure the motherboard booted up, but I did not check for a post, although I did kill power to the system uh, during the leak before the system itself shut off. Uh, so hopefully I saved everything. The power supply seems to be fine as well. We're actually gonna be reusing that uh, and the motherboard and the, actually the graphics card that was in there was not the one that we were planning on using. Um, so we don't have to worry about that either. But uh, yeah, motherboard and power supply we're gonna reuse. They're still fine. As long as you catch a leak in time, usually you can uh, save the components. That's a good thing because these are hundreds and hundreds of dollars a piece. I'm also gonna install the standoffs for the AIO first before we put the motherboard in the case, just because this is a pretty tight space, especially with uh, these modules here, kind of a enclosed space. And this is a fairly large socket. So try to do as much as you can uh, with as much room as possible before you go and restrict your working area by throwing this stuff into a chassis. Let's go ahead and drop it in, dude. This has gotta be 20 pounds. Feel that, just, I don't even hold up one hand. <laughs> yeah, that's a workout. All right, we're gonna drop it in. There's really no way to hold this board without a cooler attached, um, without it flexing. I'm gonna try to hold it from the uh, VRM heatsink. Slide it in. Check this out, Azric has a cutout for this motherboard screw. The VRM heatsink is so freaking beefy. They had to include a cutout just to access this screw here. That's insane. But that's how hot these things get. And uh, I'm not gonna complain about excessive cooling. Okay, so we've already got the power supply installed. Normally I would wait to do this uh, toward the end of a PC build just because the cables can get in the way. You wanna take care of the smaller cables first uh, because these can be held down by the thicker ones. Uh, but I wanted to test the motherboard before we went any further to make sure that the system would in fact post. It does, that's a good thing. Let's get to it. I am taking care of the most annoying part of a PC build, front IO. Okay, a USB. Three, probably getting all up in Nate's way for this shot. This is, ugh, I take it back. USB three cables are the most annoying parts of PC builds. Is that even in? I don't know if that's in or not. I guess so, but it looks super janky and loose. And can't forget our important storage drive. Leave it just like that, kind of. And this plate actually includes this screw threading above it. So we just sandwich it down and then we screw it through here and that also holds the drive in place. So this is the Intermax LickTech 2 TR4 AIO. It's a very beefy AIO. This is definitely a thicker rad than what you might find uh, just conventional 240 wise from Cooler Master, Corsair, whatever. And then the CP block is freaking thick. This is Big Mac thick, folks. You got that slab of copper underneath there. That's for uh, full IHS coverage on a TR4 or TRX40, uh, any Threadripper CP for that matter. And you've got the pre-installed mounting gear because this is specifically geared toward that platform uh, and a pretty decent hose length too. So you can fit this in some beefier cases. I wanted 240 because it'd be more supported in smaller cases and being able to fit so much power into a, a small compact mid tower like this uh, is pretty impressive. We've got the fans to install as well. I think we're gonna have those pull in air from the inside just to make installation a bit easier. And uh, then we'll get this mounted to the CPU. So yeah, God, this thing, you could, you could work out with this, it's heavy. All right, so we've got the 
Yeah, yo, installed. I switched to two Corsair fans. These are two of the three included with the 220 TRGB. Uh, we don't have one down here because I wanted to keep the hard drive cage installed. And this is a 240mm AIS, so we're not using space below the basement. Uh, yeah, should be good. We're gonna wire this stuff up. And then the last couple things to do, mount the CPU block to the CPU, and then install the graphics card. All right, now for thermal paste application, you're gonna use good old Cryonaut. I'm just gonna do whatever is gonna piss off the internet the most, like I said last time. So we'll draw a cool little picture. Maybe something like that. You guys ever played snakes? Basically what this is. Please remove before install. Let me assure you, if you do not remove this before install, you will have a bad time. Oh yeah. Does this count as plastic peel? I think so. Okay, solid copper block going down. This is gonna fit so snug. I'm not even sure how we're gonna route the tubes because, I mean, it's just gonna look like a rat's nest. I guess, what do you think? Does that look good enough, Dina? No. It looks, oh, dang, okay. You're supposed to, why do I even pay you? Now, the cool thing is too, we got the cables up top. So we'll route those in a second. We've got the spring-loaded screws here. Drop these down and torque them on. Ooh, mama. Oh yeah, that is clean. All right, this is the Reference or Founders Edition RTX 2080 Super. It does have green accents, neon green accents to be more specific. And uh, unfortunately, Nvidia has not wised up to the fact that you cannot change the color of the GeForce logo. So we have to stick with a neon green color scheme. That's why our cables from nsource.net are also neon green. It's gonna be a super straightforward install. You can see how freaking jam-packed this build is gonna be. If we had a second one of these cards, it would be probably as filled as you could ever get. There is maybe a centimeter or two's worth of clearance between the end of this card and the beginning of the AIO. That's how thick this rat is. It's a beefcake for sure. And this here is the new Elgato 4K60 Pro. It's a beast capture card, and we're gonna install that right under the card. Just like so. There's PCIe power, and oh, if we can turn it, there is 24 pin. A uh, little squished in there, but uh, still looks mighty fine. Okay, so I've gotten most of these cables out of the way of the hard drive cage. We've also cleared up space here in front of the uh, power supply, which tends to get pretty cluttered. I'm gonna go ahead and cut down these uh, tie straps and See what we got left. Are these zip ties? I feel like I'm pulling a verge. Yeah, they're zip ties. Oh my gosh, they're rubbing off on me. Yep, pretty clean cable runs. This cable could have been tightened a bit more. You see we had to split the uh, the eight pin plus four pin. This is actually a dual eight pin uh, motherboard for CP power, uh, but you can run on a single eight pin or an eight pin plus a four, which is what we've done. So that's why this splits up top. I could also use a zip tie up here if I really wanted, but uh, it looks good enough as is it's holding its uh, channel. So yeah, that's a uh, pretty clean cabling, I would say, especially for a system that has quite a bit extra, including uh, this fan hub here uh, and a potential space for a hard drive. So nice. All right, so these tubes were pretty stubborn, a bit longer for this case. Again, I'd rather have them longer though than, than shorter. Uh, shorter is never good because it means you usually can't install them in the case. Uh, but we didn't know what to do with the excess cabling. It looked really weird. It was like either covering the CPU block or covering the memory modules. What I decided to do was zip tie the tubes to the top of the chassis here where this, this grill is. Um, so it's just one zip tie and it holds both tubes. And if you see directly from the side, uh, it's a pretty much an up and down, um, yeah, I don't know, it's, it's vertical. So if you look at it from the side, Nate, that's not the side, that, nope, that's not the side either. From the side, that's the side of the, that's that, there you go. Straight up and down, yeah. So, uh, I don't know, what do you guys think about that? I mean, I think it's better than having it just kind of lay in front of anything else. Looks a bit strange, but a clean look nonetheless. So I guess I should have cut the uh, zip tie before I showed you guys that. All right, that's better. All right, so we're gonna run a few tests. First, it's gonna be just a short spurt with Cinebench R20, obviously not something to long-term stress test with, but just to show you guys uh, what we get, just short little spikes here in usage. You can see temperatures there, 62 degrees Celsius. That was our max, just opening hardware monitor. Our idle package temps are pretty hot. Um, you can see even at idle, we're pulling around 60 watts of power. And these are all of our usages. So thread utilization is extremely small here. Um, so yeah, proof that we're not under any sort of load. 
and I'm going to keep it right here on package temps. I'm going to click run on Cinebench and you guys can watch these temps here. These are current temps. So you can watch these shoot up as Cinebench starts. It has just started now. So, okay, not too bad. Uh, but if you look further down, you can see that the CPU across all 32 cores is throttling to about 3.8 gigahertz. So not very fast. I've disabled PBO because if I keep PBO enabled, I get into like dangerous territory. So um, I'm, I'm surprised that the cooler is doing as good a job as it is, but we need to test long-term. And that's what's gonna be really tricky because if the fluid temps get too hot, then the AIO effectively stops working. Uh, there's just too much heat already in the closed system uh, for any more to be introduced. That results in even higher CPU temps and it's just a, it's a vicious cycle, right? At that point, your CPU will severely throttle and uh, likely shut itself off to preserve itself. So we're going to stress the heck out of it with some good old Prime 95, which I'm not actually a huge fan of because I think it just, it bestows unrealistic workloads onto a system. Uh, but if you want the utmost peace of mind, Prime 95 it is. We're gonna click OK, we're gonna do small FFT, so that's gonna stress maximum power heat CPU. Uh, we're gonna click OK, and there we go. Now we're gonna swing on up here to package temps, and we're gonna watch these temps climb. Now, where it's really gonna get dicey is at around 20 to 30 minutes of load, uh, because at that point, the loop I imagine will be totally saturated uh, with heat. And, uh, and then we're gonna see how it actually handles itself. Right now, the system's actually really quiet. I have a pretty aggressive fan curve. I'm willing to turn it up though, if temps are too uncontrollable. Okay, so I noticed that the, our frequency had throttled down quite a bit. We're now at 3.5 gigahertz. And uh, the reason why is because we're now at 93 degrees C across all four packages, all four CCXs. So uh, that that's good news, just kidding. We're gonna go ahead and apply a more liberal fan curve, hopefully keep these temps below 90C long-term. This is after about 10 minutes you're looking at here. All right, so we've been going for about 30 minutes now. Nate, is that a good enough angle for them? Can they see what I'm pointing to here? Can they, can they see that? No, okay. they can't. They, they can't? Oh, okay, all right, so it's 89C. Anyway, uh, all four uh, packages, package temps, 89C, and it's been like this for about 15, 20 minutes now. It, it kind of peaked here, uh, and the, Frequency has definitely throttled back. It's We're still back at 3.5 gigahertz, uh, sometimes 3.45, sometimes 3.55, but uh, that's kind of ballpark where it has been. And that is looking like that's where it's gonna be for the foreseeable future. Um, so at this point, I imagine the AIO has already been saturated with heat. Uh, and uh, if we were gonna get any hotter, uh, that would continue. Uh, but it's been like this again for about 10 to 15 minutes. So. That's good to know. Um, I could say though with certainty, if I had customized the loop a bit better, uh, if I had tweaked the fan curves a bit and, and the custom loop that we built, the orange one, uh, we could have gotten a better result. That's totally my fault. Um, I just got sick of the custom cooling thing with such an expensive CPU in the last video. Uh, so I decided to, to switch to AIOs and uh, big thanks to Enermax for sending this out. Look, I can tell you, it's gonna cool your Threadripper CPU even, even if you enable PBO, which I disabled and it's still disabled for these tests, it's gonna run super hot. Every chip's gonna vary and you have a ton of cores packed into this, so it's gonna vary that much more. But uh, look, when you're pulling 300 watts just for the CPU, uh, it's pretty difficult to wrap your head around the fact that a 240 mil AIO can handle that much power and that much heat dissipation as a result. Uh, so Animax did a really good job with this. They've definitely built a robust AIO. I like the full copper contact with the IHS. Uh, it's just, it's not gonna be the best solution. And I think Animax would even admit that. Um, it's not ideal, but it certainly gets the job done if you're willing to I don't know, see your CPU's frequency throttle back just a bit. I'm content with 3.5. 3.5 all core for 32 cores. Pfft piece of cake for what I do. If you guys like this video, a thumbs up. You can click that red subscribe button, leave a comment down below, and I'll catch you in the next video. My name's Greg, his name's Nate. Thanks for learning with me.